Hey, what's going on, guys? Uh, on October 9th, uh, 2024, in, um, on the outskirts of Santa Fe, New Mexico, there was a, there was a uh, man in the middle of the road. I'm a truck driver with Western Express. There was a man in the middle of the road and um, what looked to me like he wanted to unalive himself. I was driving southbound and by the time I seen him, it was too late. I was carrying a truck and trailer with us, 76,000, 76,500 uh, pounds. Um, there was no way I could have stopped in time. Uh, I called, I'm trying to make this uh, as short as I can to fit this all in one video. But there's so much things that are have been happening that I, I think that the best thing that I could do is keep this on video and let you all know, so that you know maybe somebody can give me some advice or or, or something. I don't know what to do. Uh, so a man, a man was unalive. I called 911. The officers showed up. They questioned me and my trainee. They uh, checked the scene. Uh, after a long while, I was cleared. And um, the officer noticed that one of my headlights was not working because of the impact. So he he said, uh, he, ha he asked where I was going. I said, I have a load that needs to be dropped off in Pruitt, but I'm fueling in uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico. And he said, well, take this to Albuquerque. I'm not gonna put you out of service, but get it fixed in Albuquerque. I said, yes, sir, I will do that. So that was the plan. I was gonna go to Albuquerque and find somewhere to park and just process everything that just had happened. Uh, so I um, I was about maybe like five minutes, 10 minutes away from the, from the fuel when uh, I got a call from the adjuster for the company, a third party. Um, and they told me to just pull over where I'm at, pull over on the next exit, they need to, uh, they didn't want me to drive the truck, so she told me you can't park here, so just, you're gonna take it off this exit, you're gonna park on a, at a Target or something. So I parked it at a Target, uh, and they got me a hotel. Uh, at the hotel, I was uh, drug tested, uh, uh, alcohol breathalyzer, um, and, and then that was it. Uh, they impounded the truck. They wanted to download some data and take some pictures. They took some pictures. Um, from what I saw that night, it was dark, but from what I saw that night, there was uh, there was uh, blood on the uh, deer guard. There was um, just cracks on the hood. The, the hood mirrors, uh, some of the pieces were broken off. The front grill, some of the pieces were broken off. Uh, it was a pretty big impact. What I saw that night, I've never seen in my life, and I don't wish anybody to go through that because it does something to you. It did something to me. But the only thing that keeps me going is that I just wanna go home and see my kids. I want to see my family. So that next morning at the hotel, my trainee got cleared. He got a bus ticket home. The truck was cleared the next day as well, but I wasn't cleared. They said that I needed to be cleared by the police. I needed to be, so <clears throat> I got a call later on in the day and they said, hey, can you drive the truck? I'm thinking that if I drive the truck home, I would get there quicker than being on a bus ride. I didn't want to ride the bus because I have over a thousand dollars worth of stuff here. I mean, for anybody that's worked with Western, <laughs> that's a lot, bro, because you don't get large paychecks here. And I didn't want to leave this stuff behind. I wanted to rent a car. It would have been quicker. But I said, okay, if I get the truck, they'll send me home, right? So they gave me a truck and they asked me if I could drop off the load, which was on the way home. So I said, yes, I'll do that. 
But as I'm driving through that night, I would pass through dark patches of road. I would pass pass through um, potholes. And because of these uh, uh, low beams and the distance that you could see through them, I would think that there was somebody trying to cross the road. So I knew that wasn't right. I knew that I wasn't. it wasn't safe for me to drive at night. Um, but the, the drive wasn't far away. I think it was only like a two hour drive. So I, I, I ended up turning in the load, but I sent in a message to the company. I told them I can't drive at night. When the headlight is out, if I get pulled over by a DOT officer, they're gonna put me out of service and I'm gonna be in a violation. Um, I, if, I, if I'm gonna continue, I'm, I'll do it during the day. I feel much safer driving during the day. Plus I could see more. Uh, Throughout this whole trip, I'm driving in this truck and through the air vents, bro, the smell that comes out of those air vents, it's not nice. And uh, so yeah, so I ended up turning in the load uh, and I park it. I don't pick up the next load, I got another load and it was coming out of Pruitt and I noticed the next morning when I was gonna go pick it up at the same place um that it was actually going to yuma arizona and then that one had to be turned in on saturday and then i had to pick up on monday from yuma and then go to city of industry in california so i was like wait a minute like i'm still working for you guys I, when i told you guys from the beginning that all i wanted to, to was to go home like get me something to go home Hey, well, we're working on that. That's the plan, Jose. That's the plan. And I was like, like, dude, like, what the hell? You know, like, no, like, I'm not doing that. I'm not sitting in this truck. I don't want to be in this truck. I don't want to drive in this truck, dude. Like, like, y'all don't know what, what I saw. You know what I mean? And I'm still right now in this truck. It is Saturday. I had parked in Gallup, New Mexico because I told them that I couldn't, um, that I couldn't continue driving, that I needed some help. I needed somebody to take over and just get me home, swap a load, do something, just get me home. Uh, they ended up calling a trainer, another trainer that had a trainee that was graduating that day to pick up the load, uh, to swap loads and he was gonna drive this truck to get me to California, to get me to the terminal so, they could, so I could catch a ride with somebody else to drop me off at my house. And uh, I said, okay, that sounds good. You know, I'm, we're, we're getting, you know, we're moving. I want to go home, you know, that that's what's important to me. And uh, so they give me the contact information. I, I get in contact with the uh, trainer and he's like, well, what happened? Like, you know what, you know, the situation I had explained to him what had happened when he found, when the trainee found out what had happened, um, he had told the trainer, hey, you know, well, has the truck been washed? I said, bro, I've been telling them, I've been calling them to let me wash the truck. They said that if I wanted it washed, that it would have to come out of my own pocket. I don't make enough money in this company to wash a truck. I could barely feed my kids and pay my rent and pay my bills and they still want me to do this. He refused, he refused to take this load if the truck wasn't washed, cleaned. So they took him off, they they, uh, they left me in the truck, they ended up calling me and telling me, hey Jose, we're just gonna get you a bus pass. I said, I told you guys I can't get a bus pass because I have stuff in here. Let me rent a car. Well, if you rent a car, it's coming out of your own pocket, Jose. I said, you know what? I told, I think it was my driver manager. I said, you know what? Tell whoever, whoever told you that, tell them to stick that, fuck, that uh, bus pass up their ass i'll buy my own, i'll get my own uh my my car to rent so i guess the guy that that had said that got offended and gave me a call back uh and i said yeah i said that i mean you guys ain't, and you guys are not doing anything for me bro you guys are not doing anything like you got like i'm really i'm literally going through it and all you guys can do is just give me a little bus pass here and there trying to have me finish off loads like, I'm still worried. Like, you guys still need to get paid. Like, you guys still need to... Like, no, dude. Like, you got somebody that went through something. Get him home. That should have been your priority. 